Easy Tigers! I hope everyone's fine and dandy. Welcome back as always. Today we've got a very special episode where we explore something magical. First of all, we're going to give you a little lowdown of what's occurring in the area on Google Earth and LiDAR, and then hang around for the bonus because, whew, we've got some stuff that's going to knock your socks off. Uh, some symbolism on the rocks, but I'll give you my input on that at the end. So make sure to tune in all the way to the end. And let's get involved. Let's have a look at the geological position and looking at on the LiDAR to see what's occurring. And it's always the same old script. Always. It's always buried amongst trees. That's one of the biggest clues we've got here. It's buried amongst trees. So here at the bottom, it's 210 metres above sea level. And you can see that there's just been earth pushed up against the whole of this now this whole area is magical. So you've got some druid caves in there, you've got like you've got loads of other complexes all around the area. But it's so big that I need a chance to explore one. So 210 metres from sea level and now it's 242 metres above sea level. So that is actually about another 150 feet to the to the top of the structure. So let's have a look on Google uh, on the, the LIDAR. And have a little zoom in. So it's this area here. And it, I mean, it took took a good few hours to explore that. So I mean, there's there's a few of these in the same area. So it's worth going up there and spending a good few days in the manor. But it's crystal clear. As soon as you look at the bush parts, look at it. Look at that. Look at all this. Like it looks like it's smashed up terrain, and then bush has been planted all over it. It's the same old script everywhere. Like, how comes they've strategically planted these? And another thing is, these bushes were 100% planted just after World War Two, 100%. But there you go, that's it here, look at it. Buried structures, no messing around. And another thing is, they call this stuff gritstone, but it's, it's red sandstone. What is the big cover-up with this red sandstone? Anyway, let's have a little look about. I'll give you a little backdrop backstory of what this place is saying in a narrative. It's BS, obviously. This is all natural, natural sedimentary rock. Phenomenal. So you just got you just got like little stairs leading everywhere, little tunnels, rooms. All sorts of stuff going down. And another thing I noticed here, look at this, look at this, look at this. You can see where this was done in two sections. Look at that. Now that's not a crack. Incredible, eh? Now, let's see what the narrative says about this gaff, shall we? Road to rocks are situated behind the Druid Inn on the western edge of the picturesque Derbyshire village of Birchover, which is located close to Stanton Moor. A fascinating place to visit, carved through the gritstone rocks of the dramatic tour. There are caves with rooms, alcoves, benches and tunnels, and flights of worn steps. There are a couple of ring markings, and square sockets which may once have supported crosses. The tour is around 80 yards in length and about 50 feet in height. Mm. All that has been claimed that Rotor Rocks has some connection with the ancient Druids of the past. This does not appear to be the case. The nearby Druid Inn was once a meeting place of the ancient order of the Druids and the connection to the rocks probably arose in Victorian times possibly as a means of making Rotor Rocks more interesting and promoting it to attract more visitors. The caves are in fact reputed to have been the work of the Reverend Thomas Iyer, who lived at Rotor Hall and was parson of the local church during the 17th century. Iyer was known to entertain company and compass his sermons on Rotor Rock, which formed part of his grounds. There are also various examples of prehistoric rock art to be found at Rotor Rocks. In all, five ancient carvings have been discovered on the western end of the outcrop, 
with the best preserved to be found on a boulder just below the armchair. The carvings are etched on the edge of the stone. The second example lies close to the boulder a few metres further to the west of the same level at first. The carving which is slightly weathered consists of a cup of a part partial ring trailing off into a snake-like extension, a design which is unique in this area. A further curve, like a wing, close by makes it resemble some kind of bird. Another part that's interesting, it says Road to Rocks contains several finely balanced rocking stones which can be moved by the application of a shoulder. One of these can be once moved with easy by hand, but was moved from its position by 14 young men on Whit Sunday, 1799. So we've got all sorts of stuff going on here. We've got, we've got ancient rock art or prehistoric rock art. Another thing we've got, which I'll go into detail in a minute, is again, which is abundant everywhere, especially in the Peak District. The narrative calls this stone gritstone, when it's pure red sandstone. Now, I just want to know, like, why, what is the big deal in covering up red sandstone? Why are they smearing this gritstone all over it? It's really baffling me. And again, don't look like it's drilled out. It looks like it's, <clears throat> something's been left in there. No drill, nothing. Just go up these stairs. You see a lot of water features around here as well, collecting water. And there's a few electrical components that I've noticed. And there's also a few other people exploring this place at the same time. So it's riddled with little tunnels and steps and all bits like that. So let's have a look, let's go back down. I just find it very funny that you've got sedimentary rock this high up and then people go, oh yeah, you've got cliffs up here and uh, you've, got, you've got seabeds up there. And That'd only be possible if that water was in some sort of bowl or something, you know, or some sort of pod. Then it's feasible, but this is not, this is the opposite, complete opposite. This is poking up out of the ground. And again, just pure red sandstone, no gritstone. Gritstone is a grit is hard coarse grain silicious sandstone. The term is especially applied to such sandstone that is quarried for building material. If you look on the bottom right hand image, that is my own, very own sandstone that I made myself, red sandstone. And it's identical to that. And if you look at these images, you can see that you've got the red sandstone coming through from underneath. So why are they hiding the fact that it's red sandstone? I just can't get my head around it. I just can't get my head around it. It baffles me so much. But it's identical to what I've made to what we're looking at now. It's identical. I guess that's why it's so important for me to make it so I can spot these things when we're out in the field, eh? Just phenomenal stuff. Absolutely phenomenal. And there's also block work amongst the boulders. It's likely it was built by giants at one point. And then uh, a group of smaller people have come along and, and done all this like, block work. It's, again, another thing as well, it seems like it's something out of blinking Mexico or something, doesn't it? Or Amazon, look at it. Right, there's just so many random features in this place. This, this, this little bit over here was even collecting water. Look at the square cut into it. It's got collecting water acting like a sink. Anyway, I just want to take this time to big up the Patreons. It's thanks to you guys so we can get out and explore these places. If you want to join the gang, I'll leave the links in the description. Maximum respect to everyone. I just couldn't believe what my, what my mince pies when I was here. I, I mean, and not only that, uh, I've, I've just finished a video that you, you would have seen yesterday about electrical transformer from 20,000 years ago when it was dated 20,000 years ago. And then when I'm on the top of this structure, I come across a pole, an iron pole with chase marks for cables running down a stone. Like, what is this for? And what's this all about? See, this guy was in here with his dog, just having a little look. 
It's a proper magical place. I'd like to have seen it when it was in its prime. Again, collecting water, 100% these little steps are for collecting water. And you can see the red sandstone coming from underneath the grit stone. Like, who did that? Who actually went along? And this grit stone is a form of geopolymer. Let's have it right. How is it? Like, he's smearing it all over the red sandstone. Who done that? When was this done? <laughs> little dog. Look at that. Look at that. So that, that's that cylinder tube at the top. That is actually where they're drawing the power from. So obviously this has to be the highest point. They're obviously collecting it from the ether. And there will be chains or some sort of metal mechanism that will transfer the electricity or the power down to where it's needed. And who knows? It could even go to a transformer. We don't know. But we, we, we're fully aware that they were using power back in the day. Absolutely fully aware of that. Now you had this feature here that was like a step with a, a veranda going over it. Which is like a roof. These steps are everywhere. And if this is, like, I know I keep saying the same old stuff, but sedimentary rock, if this is, like, there's a process, right? So it's compactation. So just at that point, these rocks fail because nothing's compact here. Like, if you're compacting something and putting it under pressure and it's getting flattened, it'll be flat. But then you've got balls. You've got balls at the highest point. So that don't make no sense. These balls should be flat. So I'm climbing up here one-handed to get this footage. That's why it's a bit weird at the minute. So I've got the camera in one hand and I'm climbing up with the other. But you can see all these little chase marks running around the whole of this stone. And they're in pairs as well. That's another thing I noticed. But look, you get to the top of this. Holes, you've got holes up here. You've got the metal being held in by something that looks like it could be lead, melted lead. And again, just like the transformer, you've got the holes, you know? So I could be wrong, I might be wrong, or I might be barking up the wrong tree, who knows? But it's very suspect that you have these features sitting at the very top of this place. Right, and you can't tell me it's to collect, or you can't tell me it's a bloody for thunder and lightning. Uh, look, cables, cables. What else would go in there? Again, look at this side. Two going to one. Like the live and the neutral, you know, the flow and return of the of the power of the electricity. Look at it. Look at that sedimentary rock. No chance. And you can see the red sandstone coming through. Look at it. So these have just been balanced on top of each other. And it even says earlier in that little script bit that I read out that the rocks balanced on each other and you can move them with your shoulder and they'd wobble. Like, what is guanin with that? enjoying this because this is a very very interesting exploration and this was just before we found this megalithic wall that was hiding some smashed up I don't know maybe something to do with water maybe a pyramid who knows some sort of complex have been mashed up and hidden and this sort of stuff is abundant look at the red sandstone look at it 
Look at that. Phenomenal, eh? Right, this was a lovely part. There, there, I won't spoil it for you. But there was a few steps up here. And a few seats. Let's have a look. So you could sit up here. And just look at the view, I guess. Look at that. Obviously, the trees weren't there at the point when this was fully in use. These trees, are, are in my opinion, have been planted 60 years ago, maximum, 70 years. Let me know what you think about this place, guys, because let me know if you want, to, want me to go back here and have a, another Ooh. examine, because it's when you look at the footage after, it's when you notice a load of other stuff. Like, at the top of these stairs on the left-hand side, you'll see a stone. And when I look underneath it, there's these imprints of something. I, I don't know what's gone on in here, but something's happened. It's not eroded from weather because only this part is like it and it's underneath so look if i look, let's look up here in a minute like what's happened in here eh what went in here what was all that about and then you've got a hole and again you can just see the red limestone sandstone just just coming through So we don't see this in layers, like it's sedimentary rock. We don't see that. We're seeing it in boulders, which is against academia. So there was other caves here, but I couldn't seem to find them. Look at the block work. That block work. How old reckon that is? And again, you've got these circle holes. Again, look, look at this. What was going on in there? And all the way down and drop down. I'd actually jump down there in a sec. Boom. Here we go. Right. Now, another feature that I noticed that was covered in this bush was this absolute flush square block. Just sitting there doing nothing. Just hidden. And you've got these stairs, we come up the stairs. And here, this, this thing was collecting water. So I don't know if that went down to a well down below or, or how deep that was or anything. There's an air race siren in it. There we go, it's one of the caves. Obviously this is not the original ground level of it, it's just been filled in with tut, and I'm walking probably about one third of the way above the ground level in that cave. Now that's what it looks like if you attack the sandstone with these scratch marks. That's what it'd look like, you'd have these pick marks all over it. Could have, you know, Red sandstone in here, no grit stone whatsoever. Funny that, isn't it? What a coincidence. Now this was a bit, I didn't like it being in here really because, I'll show you. Oh. Oh. Shit. Shit, I think this is a well or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit. It's a bit scarier down here to be honest with you. So you can see these two pillars in the background, they're holding up this, this rock and I thought what is going on here, I need to get out of here ASAP. And it looks like they're painted black as well, that was another thing. Look. Very peculiar.
Anyway, that was a little tour of Road to Rocks. Incredible little find. Absolute incredible little find. Now I'm going to sh show you and talk about some carvings or rock art, or they're calling it prehistoric rock art. So let's have a bonus and let's share the love. There we go. So here it is, Road to Rocks. Let's have a look in Buxton and Matlock. So here you can see on the top left, which is the actual symbol that's been imprinted in the rock. Now my opinion about this is, it must have been done when, um, after it was in its prime, like after it had been damaged, it must have been the next lot of people that come and lived in it because I believe them, they would have been square or flush blocks, not the way they were, because it's actually carved into something that was already weathered. But anyway, let's see what it's saying. Rotor Rocks is a weird and wonderful place, perched on the western edge of the village of Birchover, above a pub known as Druid's Inn. It's a bizarre collection of natural and man-made rock features. Many to believe carved in the 17th century include a stone armchair, caves, rooms and steps. Evidence that the rocks have long been an inspiration comes from a small number of Bronze Age carvings. So they're claiming they're Bronze Age. So that would make sense because I'm saying these stone structures are a heck of a lot older than Bronze Age. So these Bronze Age guys could have come along and then graffitied it, you know, towards the west end of the outcrop. These include a motif that consists of a circle divided into quarters, each with a small cup and surrounded by a rosette with a handful of other cups close by. However, the carving is rather worn and it can be difficult to make out the exact details. A short distance away to the south is an even more badly eroded carving. This time, a wavy line and associated cups that has been suggested forms a serpent figure. This motive proved so difficult to see that I wasn't sure I had found it until I compared my photos to the others that had previously been published. I could only confirm I was looking at the same rock due to the number of small cups of unknown age that appear close to the serpent itself. There is also a further carving that is just east where the large boulder bears three cups and the ring markings. I completely failed to find this although it appears to be best preserved of the carvings of Rota Rocks. See, I didn't see none of this stuff. Due to the amount of the alterations to the rocks here, it can be difficult to figure out what is natural, what is ancient and what is more modern. And because of the nearby village and winding road system, it is easily forgotten that the Bronze Age carvings exist close to several other sites, notably Nine Stone Circles. Now I went to that Nine Stone Circles and the Nine Ladies and I think they're a load of rubbish in my opinion. I think something is significant underneath them, but people have come along and just rearranged it, just like Stonehenge. Something's going on in that area underground, well, well, buried, and they've put the, these things, like they rearrange these stones above and call them like stone circles and stuff, and they're just props in my opinion. So you guys let me know what you think about that, because it's a very fishy area. And especially when they're sitting there saying it's man-made or it's natural and you can't tell the difference. And then you've got these prehistoric carvings on there and tunnels, stairs, like wells. It's all, There's a proper complex going on. And it's funny that they just plant bush over specific parts. They're so bait, these guys. Anyway, let me guys, let me know what you think, guys. And... Uh, just before I go, I want to bless you with a couple of channels that I recommend. I mean, um, the first one is Hidden History Collective. And uh, it's on Instagram, exploring the mystery of the hidden world. And it's going around filming stuff very similar to my, my channel and similar to others. We're all the same, really, doing the same sort of stuff. So if you're on Instagram, I'd seriously recommend going over to... To the Hidden History Collective and giving them a follow. Also, there is another guy, but he does it with his bird or woman rather, and he is called Spookies. And again, he's on Instagram. Uh, so another guy you should check out. Uh, you can see that he's fresh in the game, but going out of filming the right stuff. And I believe, I think, yeah, we love Scotland. 
So I don't know if they live in Scotland or, or what, or they're just up there exploring that manor. But again, go over and give them a follow because uh, they're out in the field doing bits. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share and all that jazz. And if you want to become a patron, I'll leave the links in the description. One love, ta-da, ta-da. Easy Tigers, I hope everyone's fine and dandy. First of all, welcome back, just want to big up the Patreons, it's thanks to you guys we can get out and explore these sites. Uh, it all adds to the end contribution and we're all in it together to work out what the heck has been going on in this world really, come on. Now if you're new to the channel, I'll go out and explore sites, I can find ancient sites, sites that haven't been seen before, I work with Geopolymer. Look, that is like, you can scratch that surface off and then it's hard rock. And then in between, it's got a blatant perished cement layer. Look, from there to there. Yeah. Going all the way along. And that's about three inches, isn't it? Three, two yeah, to three inches. Three inches, yeah. Goes all the way along. Look here, again. It's unbelievable, isn't it? This has been built. A million percent, it's been built. So that was my friend Joe just pointing out the fact that this is megalithic block work and in between the block work is some sort of cement. So let's have a look at the geographical positioning of these uh, buried structures. So uh, the white parts on this lidar are actually a lake and part of a stream or a mini river, shall we say. And you can notice these little nuggets uh, everywhere. They've actually turned this area into an assault course as well. So it's in the woodlands in a part of a castle grounds so this area here is where the uh, the depression part where it's quite dense i'm zooming in now this is actually where this little complex is well when i say little complex it's obviously part of a bigger thing that's been buried in my opinion because it can't have all the same characteristics as everything else but they'd just be a crumb you know it's definitely something that's obviously been heavily altered smashed up and buried on top of or buried over sorry we say so, and one other thing about this area is it is dense in springs. All around this area is full of springs. Water is springing up everywhere around here. Let's have a look at the other lidars. So there you go. You can just see like, the, 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 like some sort of depression in the ground. So that's where we're going to be. And I found out so many stuff about this stuff. Like I said, I filmed this on the GoPro. But it didn't work. So I have to go back and film it on my phone. So let's have a look. So... It's actually in some sort of like hamlet sort of thing and you have to go through an arch to get into this segment. And like everywhere else, it's just loads of places have been blocked up. The tunnels have been blocked up. I actually stick a torch down there. And the ground level that we're on, you can see that it's just a load of earth and leaves that have been pushed up against the, the base of this structure. So God knows how many of these entrances have been blocked up. And I couldn't work out what this was for. This is just straight into the sandstone. And it goes on for blinking ages. So maybe a pipe went in here or some sort of... There is actually uh, cables in this cave. I'm not saying they're ancient, but maybe that's how they got the power supply to the cables. But you see, coming through this little arch up there, it wouldn't surprise me if there were steps underneath that arch to bring you down to this level. It's only about half a floor. Look, here we go. This is a better view for you. I mean, look how far this goes. And it's actually going the opposite way to Heaver Castle. So it's going away from the castle. So it's very... I was going to get, get crawled down there, but... It's just... Uh, you wouldn't be able to crawl out backwards very fast. If anything was to happen. And directly above me is a block, and it looks like it's just going to fall off. So I couldn't wait to get out of that little area. Look, 
there's the arch that you walk in and there's also bits of red darkness i found something phenomenal even shiva my friend's dog was finding bits of render on blocks buried look at this look how flush that is you can almost see look at that look at that do you know what this is groundbreaking what i'm going to show you here because it's going to knock your socks off i've saved it till the end but you'll see these cats and it's something that's put a lot of stuff look more of the render on the wall it's something that's put a lot of things together a lot of dots have been connected here and it seems either something very smart or very fishy has gone on you'll see clues throughout the video but you might not put it together till i say at the end and it was literally as i was leaving this place this is one of the entrances into the complex and it's as i was leaving this place i clocked it i was like oh my god so you can almost see bits of render on here and there's ah oh, tell you what watch this this was very peculiar stuff look at this symbol it's like the 666 or something like that or yeah let me just show you what it is i've done a little bit of research so the closest i could find to it was this and it's funny that i was having a chat with waking up with analog and dr longo overworld florida and we, we we actually mentioned these um symbols and it's funny that i go out and find them in the wall etched into the wall now i think it's just a shorthand or an abbreviated version of that but let's see what this symbol symbolizes so it says the triskelion symbolism one of the oldest symbols of europe the triskelion dates back over 5,000 years it is associated with celtic tribes and was found throughout celtic society on religious items pottery clothing and stones and monuments while its popularity declined with the advent of the romans the symbol continued to be an important influence of the celtic culture triskelion symbols triplis triplicities <laughs> life cycles birth life and death heaven earth and damnation holy trinity father son and holy spirit father mother and child spirit mind and body power intelligence and love so it was very interesting to come across that and uh, like i said especially speaking with old world florida and waking up vanalog and then coming to see this actually on a piece of block work it's it's, it's, it's amazing mate the, the power of the mind is incredible so this is a view from the top looking down and it's like a little uh, hamlet and we'll go inside So this is actually a wicked little exploration because even though I've been there before, when I went back there, it's so important to keep revisiting the sites because you, you, you see things that you missed before. Now, I couldn't believe my mince pies when I see all this stuff. So let's go. Let's go in here. Right, this is uh, Shiva, my friend's dog. And I'm outside the entrance. Now, let's have a little look. So you decline into the rock. Now, what's interesting about all this is like you've got distinct layers and these layers are separated from the top of the wall to the ceiling. And that's a common thing I see in these ancient sites. Now, what's the chances of that? Like the doorway is going to be the size of the walls to the ceiling. It's, 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 it's all done. Anyway, um, you, and what you're not going to believe me, but there's actually lines of metal running in between this sandstone. Now this layer that you can see here is not actually uh, sandstone. It's a render and I'll show you that. But this is a close up. Now it was very peculiar because you've got this metal in there. It's definitely some sort of iron because you've got all the uh, iron oxide oxidizing. So what, what is going on here? And you'll see this throughout the whole of this structure. In the joints is a, it's probably about five mil. So it's half a centimeter thick of iron very peculiar stuff like here you can see it running around the whole of the building very weird stuff but getting back to it uh, there's cables hanging but i don't think they're ancient i think they're probably done at world war ii or maybe a bit before but check out oh they, 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 like and this door was this door was just phenomenal mate absolutely phenomenal it's, it, it was a similar sort of mechanism that they've got in, in, in Malta when I see the um, underground doors made out of limestone in Rabat in the catacombs, in inverted commas catacombs. So what's strange about this, I need to give you a lowdown because this was actually cast in um, sandstone. 
And then you've got some weird mixture that's been attached to the sandstone externally. When I mean externally, I mean on the outside of the sandstone. So this wall that you see now is not sandstone. And you're gonna, I'm gonna prove this to you. And you you're gonna be, your, your socks are gonna get knocked off. And this is what I found in Liverpool as well, by the way. So when I was in a quarry in Liverpool, there was this humongous red sandstone block. There was two of them. So the bottom one was just the red sandstone block and the top one had all this like pre-render added to it. And I just couldn't work out what had gone on. But now I fully understand there's two coatings to this. So maybe this was done to decoy you to make you think that these are natural and they've been cut out of the stone because you've got all these like tool marks in them but look at the iron look at the look at the plate of iron that runs through all this it's very peculiar stuff so yeah maybe maybe this extra coat has been added to make you seem like it hasn't been man-made just hold hold the hold that thought because you're, it's going to knock your socks off what i'm going to show you you ain't going to believe it and again like i'm always saying if you look at the ceiling to the wall, it's completely separate. And also, there's so many weird markings all around the wall. Like, it's very strange. And this is a door. I'm trying to close it. <laughs> there's two of these doors down here. And look, you can see where they've put cables in there. I don't know why the cables go in there, but it's been chased in, and they've put it in with some sort of... Almost like concrete sort of stuff, putty concrete. Obviously, it's modern. It's not old. I don't. I don't think this is old at all. It's probably World War Two, oldest. It wouldn't surprise me if this sort of place got reused in World War Two. You know, as a, as a shelter or something like that. Oh, I didn't want to blind the dog. But you can see the chase mark, the geopolymer door, and this is a light switch, um, which was interesting. This gives you an idea really, like I see these light switches in Malta and they were quite old, they were like in the late 1800s. But who knows, I could be wrong. And you can see the material and the chase mark, uh, not the chase mark, the material that's covering the chase mark up as it goes up. So the cable would be behind this material. It's interesting stuff, it really is interesting stuff. But like I said, I'm not saying this is ancient, it's just funny that they've got a, a power supply in the cave. But look at this, this iron that's running in between these joints. It's, it's really peculiar stuff. Really peculiar. I, I can't even, I don't know what's going on there. Can you see the difference as well? Like the, as soon as the walls finish and the ceiling goes on top, that's the separation. See, my friend was actually saying that that stuff is very similar to the stuff that I found in Malta that's holding the plates with the pipes behind it. Look at all these weird lines over it. It's like they cast this extra layer over it and then just put a, a drill over it to make it look like it's authentic. But there's the chase mark and it's got the cable in it. But you can even see here, you can see the limestone behind and then you can see this other material that's been spread up all over it. And I swear they're, they're doing this to make it look like it's natural. But when, like, I can't keep saying this, but there's a part in this video that's going to knock your absolute socks off. It's going to change how you think about these sort of places. So I guess a light would have gone there. And also you can see the difference in this, it, this mix. That's, like, I'm not on about the geopolymer. The geopolymer is actually behind these, this material on the wall. Let me show you in a minute. So they've just spread all that up the wall to make it look like this is natural. It's incredible, isn't it? It really is incredible stuff. I mean, look at what's going on with all these lines. Like, what's going on here? is sectional maybe it's been spread on sectional yeah. and another thing that I've noticed it's actually going uh, this iron iron oxide is actually going over the, the top of the bottom layer and the bottom of the top layer 
So it's acting like a plaster going over the two, over the seam of the cracks. That's what it looks like. She is loving it. Doors, two two doors down. I thought that was another light switch, but it was just a symbol. And actually above that door it says Satan. So there's some weird stuff. That's my friend going through the door. Big up Joe, mate. And this is just trying to look at the mechanism because I couldn't actually look at it in Malta. The door actually went straight up to the door frame. So you couldn't see nothing. Like it was the most perfect snug fit. down here so they must have just done this geopolymer and put this frame inside it and then they've smeared all this stuff that you can see on the right hand side what this stuff is here it's like a, it's like a pre-render sort of stuff to give it this authentic look you can see it spread over here but you can see where bits of it have come off like here do you get me you can even see it there like heavily dense there like I'm zooming in now on that so I don't know how old it is But these swirls of iron running around, it's just very peculiar. Look, it's just an eye, it looks like one of them eye symbols. But again, take note of this iron that's in between. Like, how does that even happen? In, look, Satan, Satan written up there. How does that even happen in geology? Like, you, you have a layer of sandstone, then you have a layer of iron, and then you have a layer of sandstone again. Very peculiar stuff. Very, very peculiar stuff. It just don't make sense. So it seems like this was an old, old complex. They've blocked up a lot of it. We just have a crumb of it poking out. And it looks like it got reused within the last hundred years for something. Now this is what is this is gonna this is this is where it gets funky. This is where it gets funky. I'm telling you. Look, you can see the sandstone. Look at the colour of the orange of the sandstone. This is what I've got to take note. The sandstone is all—it's all made out of sandstone. You've got the, but everything that you see now is some sort of render or pre-render. Like I'm going to show you because this is the actual clip now where you see this. Take note of the water collection on the right-hand side, going down the stairs. Look at this. What is going on here? These cats, eh? I'm definitely 100%. This 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 layer that's on here now is just to throw you off the scent to make you realise or make you think that this is cut out of stone because it looks like it's stone cut stuff. And my mate was going, "Look, this is all being cut out of the stone." Look, wait till you see what I'm about to show you. First of all, let's just have a look out here. So that tunnel I was walking through, I'm at the other end of it now, looking in, looking back towards the, into the complex. Take note of the colour of the ceiling. Please take note of that. Now there was cables that come out here, like, like some light switch. Like, the light's too bright, but look at that. Look. That's what you do if you're putting a light fi fixing in or a fixture or something like that. You know, you chase the hole out and you'll have the cables poking out. Very peculiar. Like, how are you doing that? If this was not a geopolymer mix, unless them cables were dead straight, it's not happening. So anyway, take note of the ceiling, because this is where it gets funky, I'm telling you. This is where I clocked it. I thought, wow. Caught them out. Caught them out. And like I said, the top of the wall, uh, the, sorry, the ceiling is sitting directly on top of the wall. Like it's just done on. It's, it's crazy. It's absolute crazy. Now this is it. Now this is just gonna. This is like the best bit of the video because it cements everything that I've ever said. Now I'm just in another entrance. Well, look, and I looked up and I thought, wow, what's going on here? And then it showed you there's a bit that had fallen off, and you can see the the sandstone behind it 
or underneath it. So whatever's been put over this is some sort of concrete or, or acting like a concrete sort of mix to make it seem like it's natural. Because you've got now all these tool marks over it. Look at it. Wait till I pan up. You ain't gonna. I can't. I can't believe it. So I'm just showing you now, like the the levels. Look at the levels. And then boom. Look at that. Look at that. You are taking a mick, ain't ya? You? You're taking a mick out of us. They must be laughing their heads off. We're sitting there going around saying all this stuff, and it's coated in something else. Like, what's all that about? So let me just make sure you understand what's going on here. All the stuff you see on the walls has been added. It's an addition to make it look like it's natural. Look at that. So behind all this imitation of stone cut wall is the geopolymer. The red sandstone. Look at that. Can you believe that, eh? I knew I was right. I've seen this abundant in quite a few places and the most uh, one that springs to mind is a quarry called Hellsby Quarry in Liverpool and the geopolymer, the, the sandstone, the red part underneath was just, there was an abundant amount of it and I couldn't work out what was going on but it's clear that something's been spread over this stuff. So the geopolymer is, is the red sandstone. It just looks out of place. Again, these are ancient sites. This is in Hellsby Quarry again. And like I said, these, these are chase marks. And you put plates there because behind this is services. And we're linking this with mortar because this is what I've discovered in mortar as well. So behind this is some sort of service. And underneath this would have been some sort of service. But they've just chopped this well down and built on top of it. Nothing to see here moving. So there you go guys, what do you think? Yeah, that's, that's You've got light switch down there, cables, geopolymer doors, some render all over it to make it look like it's natural. But again, we're just on the tip of the iceberg. Who knows what is going on underneath all this stuff, eh? Who really knows? And look how much earth has been pushed up all these places. There must be multiple entrances here, multiple. But let's just recap, so yeah, I just want you to remember how much iron is running through the joints of this place an abundant amount of iron <clears throat> if anyone knows what that is please let me know because i don't get it and don't forget about this render that's gone over it. it's not even render they're just saying that to make it look like it's cut, cut out of a stone and the light switch eh? <laughs> and let's not forget the famous geopolymer doors I mean, I really enjoyed this exploration. It was it was incredible. I'm looking to get out at the end of uh, this month again. I'll be going up to Beach Caves up up north to see a friend of mine, and then I'll be going over to the West Midlands. I'll be doing like a big circle to scoop up some uh, some nuggets. So it's going to be interesting. I've got a few more videos to do from Malta. Um, so don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, uh, support if you can, and all that jazz. One love, guys. Ta-da. Ta-da. Trick ya. Trick ya. Let's have a Brucey, shall we? <laughs> yeah, big up. So this Brucey was, uh, it was very special, really, because my friend took me to this well. This well here is in the shape of a key, and it's called Keston... Sorry, this is in Keston Common, I believe, and the, and the, the key, or this well here, is actually called Caesar's Well. Now, the water's springing up in this, in this bowl at the top, and then it trickles down, downhill, and it fills up three other pools of water, and then it fills up, uh, or it contributes towards a river. Now, you can see little bubbles coming up over here. I just couldn't, it was just phenomenal. And then you can see the water trickling out down here. Now, uh, how it, it makes springs fascinate me, and um, um, when I when I get the money and I can be funded, I am going to go in on springs. I'm telling you, because that that is one mystery for me, for being a plumber and loving all that stuff. I need to work out what's going on. In. But you can see the water flowing down, so it fills up that key, and then it trickles down into here. Let me just show you. Let me just give you a 
little view from Google Earth. So Caesar's will is literally what I'm touching now, what I just touched. And then it fills up this humongous pool. And then you can look around like this. This is one of the pools. And by the way, it's stepping down every time. I can't remember the, I can't remember how much it stepped down by. I'll show you. So each pool was stepping down and you've got, this is the last pool. So that spring filling it all up and then, then the ravens born. So look, there we are. Let's have a look at it. So let's have a look at it on the LiDAR because that there looks like an Iron Age fault. That's what they look like. But look, we didn't even look at that. I'm not looking at that. That's just something that poked out to me straight away. Iron Age fault. But on the left hand side of that is where the uh, spring is. You can see the uh, three different level platforms in the top of the LiDAR. There we go, I'm zooming in now. So the water springs up. Pretty much there and it goes into the three pools and then fills up a river. Now imagine if that didn't like um, go into a river. Like it just keep flowing. I suppose it would cause its own river, wouldn't it? Maybe that's what happened. Maybe that's how these things work. But this is what I wanted to work out. But what an incredible place. Like you've got all of that. You've got all of that spring water springing up through the stones and the rocks, filling up three humongous pools. And then it goes down to the river. So that's interesting, mate. Very interesting stuff. Big up Joe for that, mate. And big up Shiva. Shiva the dogger. He, uh, the dog's actually got an Instagram. So uh, you should go and follow the dog because my mate put some good videos up of him and his dog. I'll leave all the links in the description anyway. But yeah, what a wicked day. Absolute wicked day. I just wanted to show you here the spring where the water starts for the river, how it fills up the free pools and um, where it ends up. So this is the boots on the ground of the root of that spring. So it comes from up there. You can also see culverts added to this. So this will also collect rainwater and stormwater and it will run away into this, into here. So this is where it starts. This is the first pool. That's the first pool that gets filled up. And this is the second one. And it drops down, it goes through here, so it's going underground. Sorry, this was the last one. Look, it comes through here. Now, I just, when I see this, I thought, wow, I can imagine places like Malta and things like that being like this, just having the flowing, gushing water. Just going down the steps. And it almost looked like it was springing up from here. But when I went in there and had a look, it wasn't, it was literally, there was a dip in the ground. So the water was hitting that dip and then bouncing back up so it looked like it was actually springing out of the ground there but that's not the case I was like what that bloody hell look, it's just springing up right there but it's it's hitting it's hitting the, the stone in front and then bouncing up after investigation so yeah it goes down here and you can just imagine the sort of power this could generate this water and then where does it I know it ends up in the river and the sea and that but where does it go after that there must be a continuous cycle. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and all of that jazz. One love, Tigers. Ta-da. Ta-da. Some people, eh? Easy Tigers, I hope everyone's fine and dandy. Welcome back, I hope everyone's been all right. First things first as always, I just wanna big up the people that have supported me. I just wanna say thanks to you guys. If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to have this channel and go and explore these sites and give you my thoughts and opinions on it. Anyway, if you wanna to contribute to all this and help me get out and about, or you like my stuff or whatever, whatever Trevor, the links will be in the descriptions. So we're going to be looking at Rygate today. And in Rygate, you have an extensive network of tunnels inside this mound, which looks a bit to me like a dismantled star fault or a star city. 
but we're going to check the geology out underground and we're going to look at the props on top and we're going to be looking at one of the oldest road tunnels in Europe. But first let's have a look at Rygate Castle which is no more than a prop, okay? Rygate, Rygate Castle is a former castle in the town of Rygate in the county of Surrey, England. None of the castle buildings survive today but a cave below the site, considered to be part of the castle, still exists. Known as Baron's Cave, it is occasionally open to the public for tours. The site of the castle is known as Castle Grounds and is a public park. At its entrance stands a folly, built in the 18th century in the form of a medieval castle gateway. In 1777, a mock medieval gateway was built over the ruins of the original castle. None of the original castle buildings have survived, with the exception of Baron's Cave. Little more is known of the castle which has never been excavated on any great scale. Local legends say, prior to the signing of the Magna Carta, the rebellious barons met to hammer out the details of the document in the extensive caves below the castle. In modern day, the Rygate Castle Tunnel runs under the grounds of Rygate Castle and was constructed in 1823. It is believed to be Europe's first road tunnel and is pedestrianised. The castle grounds remain as public gardens. The castle gate is the main feature of Rygate and Banster's municipal coat of arms. I also read that they chose to cut straight through with this uh, tunnel road, but uh, just so they didn't have to go round the mound. But then I, I, I had to work out, well, like, going around the mound is, like, less than half a mile. So, I just don't know why they did that. In my eyes, it was already there, the tunnel, and they've lined it with bricks, and I'll show you why when we get to that part. But first, let's have a look at this little pyramid that they've put on top, which is just a prop. Because that's what they do. That's all they do, these guys. They just put props on top of, on top of real history. They smooth it out, they dismantle it. They get rid of all the stuff and then they build props out of the material that they've dismantled. So here you will see a pyramid. It's only probably about 10 foot tall to be honest with you. But it's made out of geopolymer limestone. And whatever structure was here, that is the material that was being used. And even when you go underground, because the second half of this video is where I'm in the tunnels exploring. And believe me, I go off the track underground, mate. Believe me. Do you think I'm going to go there and the sign says don't go in and I'm not going to go in there? <laughs> Get out of that. When I see a sign saying don't go in, that tells me to go in. But anyway, enough of that. So this here now, like this is meant to be the entrance into Baron's Cave. So it's just like a big mound. It's less than a mile in diameter. But it's actually about 300 foot tall. No, sorry, not 300 foot tall. 300 foot above sea level. Look at it. Yeah, crazy, eh? See, the stone, the the geopolymer stone, is very old. But it's just it's just what it's made out of the structure that was there before. Now, like you said, you can see how smooth the ground is on top of here as well. But this would have been the entrance or one of the entrances into Baron's Cave. See, what they've done here, they've actually, and now this is looking into the cave, so it's lined with red bricks, but it's, I'm not, there's nothing in that. It don't mean anything, by the way. I'm just saying. You can't see much in there. But what they've done is, they've um, split this area up into like four or five different cave networks, but it's just one, one big cave system. But they've set it up into four or five different ones to make you think like there's different multiple caves but it's all just one big network under there. So the area is quite interesting. Geological, it's quite interesting. You've got this sort of cut in here, and when you see that, that means they've just cut out a slice of history. Normally they put a car park in there or, or, or some sort of units or something like that. But this is the uh, mound we're looking at, and you can see that line straight through the mi middle here. This is the entrance to the railway tunnel here. So they completely line this with bricks. And this section here is what I'm panning through now, and it comes to the other end. Now this is looking over the bridge on the other side of the tunnel, which is this part here on the yellow arrow. But God knows what was going on here. Look at it. They've just put a pyramid banging in the centre of it. 
But all the levels are completely uh, out around here. It's all completely... You just look at it. God knows how many times this has been built over. Not the mound, just the areas around the mound, you know? So if you look at other lidars, it'll give you a different image. It just seems like it's heavily damaged around the edges, doesn't it? But smoothed out on top. And this is it on Google Earth. See, this is where we entered in one of the caves. They sell you that as a tour. And that is at the railroad tunnel. And this is the other another entrance that I went into, which is halfway up the hill in a load of bush. And this is the prop from 1777. You know, the folly they built. So like I said, this is 100 metres above sea level. So about 300 foot above sea level. And this is outside the tunnel. Now, like I said, they what they've done was they just lined everything with bricks. And there's no way this is 1823 this is built. Behind the brick is all limestone brickwork or block work. And I'm not lying. I'm not lying, the camera didn't pick this up. I did have images, but for some reason, some don't store my phone. And all these arches are not, that these are all entrances in, by the way. Well, I'm just gonna walk through this now. It's the best way to show you, is just to walk through it. So speed things up. So this is all sandstone outside here. And there's just entrances galore all along here. But like I was saying, with all the arches in the actual tunnel, they're all blocked up or bricked up. But behind them, there's tunnels, networks of tunnels. There's probably about 10 entrances in this tunnel in front of you to get into the network or the big mound. It could even be a pyramid that's just been smashed up and blown up. Who knows? Who knows? Sandstone. But look at these sandstone blocks. Look at this. Look at this. Like what? What? This is a real crumb of history here. Look at that. Geopolymer to the maximum. Look at that. That's something you see in Malta. I'll tell you where else I see this. When I was in Bristol, and I was going through um, the canal. There's some very ancient block work there. It's the same as this. It's just ancient. So this tunnel was not built in 1823. It was renovated. The brickwork was done in 1823. And I'll show you now, look, because you can see that the original structure was made out of these white stones. Now, I don't know what it was, either chalk or white limestone. It was definitely some sort of calcium carbonate, either way. So it seems like they got rid of the original outer layer of this structure and then replaced it with the red bricks, integrated into the red bricks. So that tells you that there was an original structure and it's extremely old and it's being covered up because these blocks are inside and outside of all of this structure. Because you're not gonna do this part here in this material, in this shape and form, are you? And then go to red brick like that, it don't make sense. And you'll see all this underground as well. So it's just been added. But look how old these blocks are. Look at that. And again, when you look at these arches, you'll see doors inside the arches. But it's just so old, like, it's hard to uh, notice some stuff. Look, there's a door there. I don't know if you can notice it. And there's loads of air vents on these as well. You always see air vents. But again, and when it said 1823, I don't even believe this was built in 1823. I believe it was built a long time ago. They've just put 1823 to it. 1800s you know but god knows what was above this there's another door so this is meant to be the longest tunnel road in england not the longest why do i keep saying that the first the first tunnel road in england and that was 1823 again look more that's abby just showing you So at one point, these were accessible. These would have had doors there, wouldn't they? So 
And another thing is I met a guy here and he's going to take me in the end of August, beginning of September, into a network of tunnels underground that goes for 26 kilometers. 26 kilometers. So the other entrance to the cave is to the right. And this here, look at this brickwork. You're telling me this is only 200 years old. Get out of it. But yeah, look in here. I'll come back and put the light on. But look at that. Hang on a sec. Lovely bit of ironwork though, isn't it? Beautiful. Beautiful. So this is the light through here. So they said it's sandstone in there, but there's some sort of render over the wall and it's what you see in Malta as well so that tells me that they'd have so that's like some sort of like a uh, rendering skin and then they'd have put a finished layer over the top of that but that's all been dismantled just like everywhere you go they always took that layer off for some reason and then just said oh look they're hand, ca hand cut caves again here can you see the stones or the blocks limestone blocks either side of the red bricks they're leaving these little crumbs here. And up there, it's going to show you how old it really is. But it definitely has the characteristics and the feel. Look, there you go. Some services. You've got air going inside and you've got water going inside. You've got more air vents. Look. And here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. But these bricks are older than 120 years. Yeah, but look, they are limestone. Um, look at that. Falling apart, mate. Blocks behind one skin of red brick. That's all it is, one skin of red brick. So if you've got something that large, you do not put one skin of red brick. That's just to show. That's just cosmetic. That's all that is. It's just cosmetic to make it look like it was built in 1823 when really it's old school. So we're on top of the tunnel now looking down, looking down at the tunnel. Or the tunnel entrance should I say. And now I'm just going to pan from left to right and you can see how old the block work is. Look how old that is. That is so old. That was not done in 1823, I'm telling you that now. No way. Maybe the brickwork, but I still believe the brickwork's a lot older. Look at that, you've got a little arch there that's been blocked up. And another thing is, when we go inside these tunnels in a minute, you see how much stuff is blocked up under there, it's unbelievable. I'm telling you now, the military must have spent a couple of years down there blocking everything up, just like they do everywhere they go. Just like the Williamson tunnels. Do you know that in the Williamson tunnels, the military spent a year and a half down there blocking everything up. Look at this, here we go, we get to this. Now we're inside, again you've got blocked, this is something you see in Malta by the way. This is exactly my, look, see, <laughs> blocked up to the maximum. Look at that. Breeze blocks. So it's done quite modern, and you've got a load of rubble in front of that. Look at this, this is block, this is, look at this, this is geopolymer down here, I'm not lying to you. This is what geopolymer is, it's, it's all poured in sections. Look at this, look at this. Like if this is not geopolymer, how do you explain all the different sections? You don't, you can't. There's nothing to explain, it's geopolymer. I'm sorry to keep going on about it. But what they've done is they've lined most of it with red brick to make it look like it's what's around is natural but look at look at you can see all the separation in it look at the columns on the left hand side of this look look at this look at that look at that look at that when did nature decide to stop growing and then and then grow another course of block can someone explain that to me but again they line it all with red brick to hide that it's man-made so don't forget, we're inside a mound, all right? We're not actually underground. We're not below sea level or ground level or anything like that. We're actually inside a mound here. So there's probably people outside on the same level. We're actually higher than people outside, but we're inside a mound. So it seems like we're underground. So this could all just be made up and slapped a load of mud on top. 
here we go. When I see signs like this, do not enter, I think, get no chance, no chance. But I'm glad I went around here because I ended up getting something and I'm going to have to get tested. They had a few artifacts around here and I was like, hmm, I'll have, uh, I'll have a look at this. See, so this, you're not allowed around here, by the way. This is all buried off. Look, dismantled Roman tile kiln storage. So I thought I'll have a look at that. Again, just look at the walls. Look at the walls. Look at it. It's like it was done in sections and they've put something over it. Just like it. This is just like in Malta, though. This is the messed up thing. And then they've just put, like, on the corners, they've put brickwork. But look at it. Look at this. And again, another blocked up tunnel there. Look at that. Look at that. And to the right hand side. But you can see, like, look, look here. You can see layers where it's been stacked on top of each other. Look at this. Look at this. This is in Malta. This is stuff you see in Malta. This is geopolymer poured on top of each other. They are not cracks. Look at this. These are not cracks. This is geopolymer poured on top of each other. I can't keep saying this. Like, look at it. Look at it. Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket. Geopolymer to the maximum. And and then you've got you've got this breeze block door on the left. And you, again, you've got loads of rubble in in front of the breeze block door door look at that look at this come on cracks <laughs> but look at this this is just incredible incredible I'm so glad I'm so lucky that I get to go to these places and check this out that someone was coming oh no no one was coming at this point but Abby jumps over with me and we have to run this is quite entertaining but yeah so this it, so we went into two two networks of the caves and this one is baron's cave directly underneath the the the, uh, the prop of a pyramid look again just just put on top of each other no problem explain that like a geologist explain that to me please Explain this. <laughs> oh God, it's just—it's it's a joke, isn't it? Really, it really is a joke. Again, another blocked up tunnel but I couldn't show you but I don't know why they put all the rubble in front of it it's very peculiar and I'd like to know do you know what part of me thinks is is the next cave behind but it's where they have sectioned it off to make it seem like there's multiple caves in this one little area when it's just one massive subterranean network yeah we heard someone coming so we had to run out by the way but look at it and it's the same old story wherever you go, wine bolts. So we are now in another tunnel network, but it's the same network. And here, this this is strange because I don't know what they've done here. Well, I know what they've done, but I don't know why they've done it. It seems like they've put this layer over to make it seem like it's natural. But every now and then a bit of it's falling down and it just looks like a... Look at it. Look at this. And this ain't concrete, by the way. This is something else. It's some form of stone, but not concrete. Again, a blocked up arch with an air service running through it. And look at this. You can see like this sort of render or this like plastered, maybe it's waterproof, who knows. 
Seems very old though, very very old. And again, a bricked up arch. And then it's had this plaster slash concrete slapped over it. To speed things up a little bit. You don't want to see all the props. But this was quite interesting because it had an old school battery in there. No way. Which was very interesting. Sometimes, I don't know if anyone knows what a kleptomaniac is, but sometimes I get the urge to, <laughs> I didn't take it, but sometimes I just get the urge to take things like this, but I couldn't do it. But I'd love to. Look at that old school battery in a glass jar, eh? Jesus Christ. So this is, a a Abby found this, this well is done. incredible. Listen to this. It's sly gits, mate. This is artificial. Sounds like it's been smeared on a plaster board. So this must, this is the uh, polymer. Yeah. Proves that this is jelly. Yeah. What dogs, eh? Absolute <laughs> dogs. Yeah, look, they put a skin over it, no? Yeah. Look, look. Yeah. And again, it's like some sort of plaster that has been put on top of a plaster board. Some sort of geopolymer mix smeared over it to make it look like natural stone. It's a flicking joke. Wow. And again, another bricked up arch or bricked up door, but this has been bricked up from the other side and this is what happens. Bricklayers don't tend to um, point the other side of a brick wall. And that's what's happened here. They just didn't come around and repoint this, so this has been filled in from the other side or bricked up from the other side. Again, you see all these old, old, chalky limestone bricks. Very peculiar stuff. These are the same bricks that lined the outside of the tunnels. And look at these massive stones. Again, these have to be geopolymer or artificial. As in like, you know, when I banged it and it was making a noise like it was a plasterboard. <laughs> I digress. Oi! Don't forget to subscribe. Cool, that geezer looks like a nutter. You better subscribe. Let me just take you to outside now. If you look at the start of this arch, you can actually get an idea of how big the arch would have been. But it's covered in bush and you only get to see half of it. But what they've done is they've filled it in and you can see a smaller arch underneath. Now this is the same stonework or block work that you see on the outside or the inside of the bricked tunnel. And you see this inside of this structure. Now I'm in another set of caves. I weren't even allowed to use my torch down here, but me being me, I'm not gonna go there and not get it out. The, the tour guide was real cheesed off with me. Yes. Really yeah, cheesed off. And then again, you weren't even allowed up here. There was a little sign here. And if this guy weren't here, I'd have been up there. I'd have been filming this, but the geezer was standing next to me the whole time. I couldn't even go up there. But that is ancient. I'm telling you, that is ancient up there. What's, what's going on? So I didn't get to film much in that second from last cave. So I couldn't really film much in that cave. But I've got a couple of bits. But anyway, this is outside, literally just outside. Now look how old this is. Again, geopolymer limestone. Look at this. And then they put some concrete on there and, and scored lines in it to make it look like it's block work. I don't know. I don't know with these guys. But look at these old blocks. Look at this. Look at this. And these are the same blocks that you, you see lining the bricked tunnel that was meant to be built in 1823. Sorry, not lining it, but there's a skin of them bricks behind the red bricks. So this is what they're trying to hide, this sort of stuff. Because even here, see this bit of render up the wall? That's to hide these limestoney chalky blocks. I'm not joking. This is what this is what they put this render on there for to hide it. Look, you start seeing it. Yeah? Look at this. Like I said, these are the ones that were inside that mound, which I believe is some sort of man-made structure, maybe a dismantled pyramid or starfall. But this is the blocks that they've been using to build it up, or the materials. And they just put this, this render over it. 
You can even see where they've tried to cover them up with paint, but it's just it's come off up because it's obviously so old. But it's the same material as this as well. So obviously at one point, the whole area was built out of these materials. But they've just used the materials. Look at this. Look at it. This is geopolymer to the maximum. But like you know now, you know what geopolymer is and looks like. You can spot it a mile off. Look at it. <laughs> Got to give them props. It is a good prop. It's not bad, but it's, it's just made out of geopolymer. An old geopolymer structure. Look at it. That's why it looks so old. It's only actually 200 years old. Or 250. 30 or 250 but the blocks and the bricks look about a thousand years old and there's the pyramid in the background anyway I've probably bored the socks off you or I've knocked the socks off you I'm not gonna do a Brucey this this week because I've had a lot going on I've got a lot to sort out but I will just talk a couple of minutes before we, we duck out and go and separate so don't forget we've obviously got Portland if people are still up for that and uh, it's the end of next month I think it's the 27th of August to be precise we'll have a little day out over there six hours walking around the uh, the megalithic sites obviously next week I'm going away for a few days I'm going to the Peak District I'm going to be going inside a mountain on a boat looking for the source of a river I'm going to be looking at all sorts of geology around the area I'm going to be looking at all sorts of stuff I've got networks of tunnels in Nottingham to go and see dissolved buildings or melted brick buildings whatever you want to call it I've got all sorts going on oh and another thing I've been doing I've been making some geopolymer or, or not geopolymer uh, a form of geopolymer like a Roman concrete so I'm going to be making a granite one a limestone one and a red brick so we're going to be looking at that in the next few days so there's a lot to get through. I've got a lot of stuff coming up. Like I said, I've been making these geopolymer slash Roman concrete blocks behind the scenes. I've got about six field trips coming up within the next week. Mate, stay tuned. Get me to 100,000 because I'm going to be bringing you the best content around. I feel like a mad scientist at the moment. I've got all sorts of chemicals at home. It's mental stuff, mate. Absolute mental stuff. But I've recorded it. I'm in the process of doing it and that's another video that will be ready in the next, within a week. So you'll have a look at that one as well. So, with that being said, if you want to help me out guys to support me, because obviously I'm not working, this is my job. So the, what money I'll get from this channel, i put straight back into it and go out to places. Hopefully, one day it will pay off. Remember guys, love each other. It's a hard world out there. So, one love, ta-da, ta-da. Easy Tigers, I hope everyone's fine and dandy, welcome back as always, today I'm going to be acting like Picasso and I'm going to be painting a picture for you because I keep going on about these structures, this geopolymer, this old world that's been buried and all this business, well today I'm going to show you how to look for these crumbs and the way I'm going to do that is I'm literally going to give you a tour of a certain area where I managed to scope out the perimeter of certain, certain anomalies and then I've painted a massive picture just like Picasso and I'm going to show you exactly why I go on in that area. Just like I did with Nottingham, Liverpool, Bridge North and Malta. So this is actually just on the outskirts of a place called Kimber. But first of all we need to big up the Patreons because it's thanks to you guys. Uh, we're in a cost of living crisis and this sort of 
donation or help out or handout helps me out massively when it comes to petrol and staying in these areas so i appreciate every single one of you for doing that and look where we're going and look what we've discovered so far so i haven't done it on my own it's you guys have been helping me out as well so maximum respect to all of you and let's crack on shall we so to find these places like i keep going on about and i keep going on about this blueprint it's actually quite simple and it's because my brain has the capability of recognizing patterns that's how i come across this and it's because i kept going in and out of these sites in certain parts of of this realm that i started noticing certain things that are matching now let's just get straight to it shall we because this is the area in question this is where i start to walk around and this is when you start noticing things are not right to the average bear the research would stop here and this is a natural sandstone formation but anyone with half a brain cell that would look into things critically will notice that something is massively wrong so we're only down the road to Kinva now Kinva is exactly the same sandstone as what's down the road it's the red sandstone that's been buried and hidden except for this part that we're in now has been turned into a tourist attraction the other parts have just been buried built on top of blocked up you name it nature reserves golf courses all that shebang so we're going to start off around here and i'm literally going to give you a tour of this area and we're going to go around the perimeter of this humongous complex and i'm going to show you exactly what's going on now on the lidar you can see that it has been absolutely abused absolutely abused but we're going to start off in a place called the holloway and i'm going to walk down here and i'm going to show you what is guanin because on the left hand side there is a pumping station and on the right hand side is where all of the geopolymer starts well accessible geopolymer starts right here we go so this building obviously piqued my interest and we're starting at a place called the holloway now with a name like that that's very suspect now what this particular part is going to do is going to show you exactly where i'm going to start from and where i'm going to walk for the next five minutes and i want you to take note of how this side has been completely covered up with bush and how we have just built directly over and on top of this sandstone now like i say you've got the geopolymer then you've got the blocks made out of the geopolymer then you've got the modern stuff now you tell me how old this is to be sitting here like this when was the last time you you know that humans were knocking up blocks like this? Look at that. Look at it. So in my opinion, they've just filled in a wall. That's all they've done there. And the same on this side. Don't think they've just stuck a couple of these red sandstone blocks in to make it look fancy. These are the bits that are protruding out further than they should have. So it tells me that the other blocks have deteriorated behind that and they've just put in the bricks but we've just built directly on top of this stuff. Look at this. And we're told that this sandstone is not strong enough, that you can't do nothing with it, that it's so weak. Yet we're, we're building cities on top of it. We're building towns on top of it. Like I showed you in Nottingham, they built a student accommodation directly above a sandstone complex. Now here we go. This is where it starts to get very, very funky. Very funky. Just pure red sandstone, just like the one I made at home. Exactly the same. No marine biology, no shells, no, no dead animals, no nothing in the bottom of that. And like I say, like, it's meant to be a process of compactation and cementation. Uh, but we don't get that I mean I went down to my local beach the other day and if that's meant if that's going to be sedimentary rock then there'll be all sorts of stones shells and everything but we don't see that I see an absolute clean mix of geopolymer absolute beautiful mix look at that absolutely beautiful and again, it's identical to the one I've made at home. And that's why it's so important that I made this red sandstone geopolymer. And it's also identical to all the other places that we're examining. Just have a close up. It's nothing more than feldspar, quartz and silica. 
with iron oxide. Now, I, I used sodium silicate, which is water glass. So I don't know what these ancient used. But while we're on this topic, you will clearly see that this is where it gets interesting because, like I said, if it's alkaline based, then you add something acidic to, to destroy it or vice versa. So clearly, I'm about to scratch this now and you're going to see something that's crazy because this part here, and you can see that it's been put into some sort of sack or molding or something. You can see the imprints, but look at that. So that's just falling off like nothing, right? Nothing. Like I'm doing this with my finger, little, little effort whatsoever. But then I just come to this side where it's darker and it's rock solid, like you can't do this. Like, look, let me just show you one more time. Look, bang, see the difference? This side is extremely hard and it's darker and the other side that I'm scratching away is lighter. Now, I don't know what has gone on here to cause this to happen, but really it should be the same all the way through. It should be the same hardness the whole way through this stone. So something's been added to this or spread over it or smeared over it or sprayed over it to make certain parts of this red sandstone weak. And it seems like they've done this in all of the tourist attractions as well. So when I say that, I mean if you go to Kimber. If you go to Kimber, I know I'm down the road, but if you go to Kimber and start scratching the walls, it starts falling off. But then you go to another part of the rocks and you scratch it and it's solid. You're, like, you're not even leaving scratch marks. So I am calling this that they are 100% spraying this with some sort of material to make this deteriorate. And obviously it backs up their theory, doesn't it? It's as weak as anything, yet they can still build on top of it. But look, look at this, look at this, like this. The, what I'm getting from this and the research that I do, that this world, the old world that we, we, we are currently researching is a cross between our future and the Flintstones. I know it sounds crazy, but I can't help it. But the, the evidence that we're building up here is just phenomenal. We lived in some sort of rock world, world of rock, you know, clearly. That's, that was our building material and we built our realm out of this st sandstone and limestone. Look at this. Look at that, and then you can see where they've just added, what's that, a metre of earth on top? Look at that. I guess the foundations to that structure on top goes into the earth and sits directly on top of the sandstone. It's just phenomenal. And again, this is something you see in Petra. This is something you see in Iran. This is something you see in Africa, South America. It's clearly a universal way of building. It's a universal building material. Now, like I say, these cats block everything up. <laughs> it's now my job to go around and have a look. And again, look at the swirls. Yeah, and you're going to see this here. Now, this, this actual segment here is all on its own. Look at this triangle segment all on its own. And then also look at these, like, they look like some sort of balding marks that are holding it in place. And they're going against the complete opposite way to the, what you want to call striations but really they seem to be some sort of balding marks that are holding it in place and this is abundant everywhere let's have a look like this bit here you can see that some plank of wood went in here to hold these up and that's what's gone on here like how do you, how do you explain them, them them segments anyway i digress we move on phenomenal stuff and again, the matrix is so clean. This, however they built this stuff, it's been squirted out of some sort of machinery in blobs on top of each other. And how do I know that? Because I've been going around for the last three years collecting all the evidence I need to present this sort of stuff to you guys. Now just look, it always goes to one point in the corner all the time. It's just phenomenal, it's phenomenal. Now I can understand like uh, from a geologist's point of view, uh, it would make sense if you looked at one site, but when you see this throughout multiple sites, it's, it just don't add up at all. So here we are again. And it seems like there's multiple ways inside these structures. And when I say structures, I don't mean just a building. I mean these places had roads incorporated into them, levels or terraced quarters for living. It had storage of food. Yeah, had all sorts of stuff going down. Look at the angles in this. You're telling me this is natural, right? Come on, guys. Give me a break. 
But I digress. We move on. There's no argument here no more. There's no argument. I don't see one shell. I don't see nothing. Lithification, my backside. Look at that. Look at it. So I just can't help it. I'm sorry if I come across cocky sometimes. I'm really not that character. But when you've been saying something for so long and you've built up the evidence, like you're going to say it with confidence. And that's what it is. I'm saying it with confidence now because it, it is, it's, it's undeniable and I've got the proof. So I'm sorry if I come across cocky. I'm really not. It's just me being confident because I know exactly what I'm saying is true. And I've got the evidence to back it up. So let's just have this little recap. Don't forget, I'm walking around this one little segment in a place called the Holloway, just outside of Kinva. And again, when you look inside these places, you can see that they've been blocked off further in. So the outside bits that get used for storage, and then you can see as you start to go inside the storage parts, that you can see that there's actually blocked up entrances into the actual complex. And again, just showing you this sandstone, no, no shells or nothing, nothing like that. No marine biology, nothing at all. Just pure, clean sandstone geopolymer. No shells. Remember, shells would fall to the bottom, so would the marine biology, and it are compact and cementation, but we don't see that. We just see an incredible mix of geopolymer. And I just want to big up Dutch sense because uh, it's uh, again look at look at the marks like whatever was holding this in place is all over this sandstone. But this is actually where I met Dutch sense for the first time, right here. And I was starstruck, to say the least. And I just want to give this time just to say thanks, mate, because um, you've had a massive impact on my channel. Uh, you can bless people just by saying their name, you know, and, 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 and you bless them. And it's nothing to you, but it means everything to me. So, big up Dutch. I, I hope you're listening, mate. Uh, maximum respect. And I really hope we can get a little saint saint going on soon, mate. Fucking hell, mate. Go around me, can't you? <laughs> Fuck off. Sweet. Yeah, you're driving off, you Swiftly moving on, as you do, up Mill Lane. So behind these bricks are clearly the sandstone structure that's been buried. And these roads are ancient roads. And like I said, if you go, you have to walk around the perimeter of these structures to find the nuggets. And then if you're lucky enough, you'll find somewhere. Look at this. I mean, it's just phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Like on the other side of the road, behind me, I've just shown you that stuff with entrances going into underneath where I'm standing right now. So they've just built this 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 world that we're living in or walking around in and, and they've just built that directly on top of this geopolymer world. Look at this. And every now and then you've got a little crumb poking out. But like I said at the start, it's my job now to expose it and bring it to you guys and show you why I go on. Again, even when, like, I, 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 I like this episode so much because I've done so much research into this. Uh, I mean, I was even looking at houses around the area and, like, uh, just looking at this sandstone structure in the background. And I was thinking, flip it now, I'll show you in a minute anyway. Like this, let me just fast forward this because I'm actually walking above all the sandstone structure now. So underneath me is all the entrances going into underneath this. Now, this is the houses. Look at it. And you've got this, like, look at it. It's just this structure in the background. So I'm walking above it. Anyway. So a lot of it gets used for storage, but it's when you go further in, or when you get inside, you can see that it's been blocked up so you can't go any further. But old eagle eye pulley, just, it's just abundant of crumbs. When you know where to look, it's full of crumbs. Like, and there's a, there was there was a water supplier very very close as well, very very close. I managed to get in there, but a couple of old ladies phoned the police. Right, I, they were waiting for a bus. See me jump over the fence, and it, bang, they're both on the phone, both of them at the same time. Couldn't believe it. But I'll show you. So yeah, this looks like it could have been used for coal storage or something. 
maybe. It's obviously like some sort of outhouse part. But again, it's an addition to this structure. And something's happened in here. They've taken all of the uh, render off the wall. I don't know what this stuff is. But if you ask me, it has to be just some sort of calcium. Like I made something very similar to this. So I made something very, very similar just out of shells and sodium silicate. That's all I used, and it came out like that. And it was the most incredible glue I've ever made. I, will, I mean, I, I, I dropped a bit on the floor, and then something stuck to it, like in, in the garage, and it just got stuck. Like the next day, it was just welded together. And you go, look, it's all over the shop, all over the place in here. But uh, I mean, how old is this wall, by the way? And also notice that there's a ledge running around the whole of this, about a metre and a half up, I'll show you in a sec. But in here, it's just been used for a dump to store stuff. But there's the ledge. Again, you can just see the, the geopolymer done in sections poured in sections into some sort of moulding. That's what's gone on there, on a macro scale. This realm has just been fabricated for us. And we're given some backstory about a big bang and, you know, it like, it's just like the cobblers, isn't it? There you go, a bit of render on the wall. Oi, oi. Oi, oi. So I don't know what they was doing. Was it insulating the building? Was it protecting it? Was it another thing that's getting me going now? Is like the, the use of iron oxide inside this structure. Like, why is it there? Is it there for the chemical reaction, or is it there for electrical properties? I don't know. I don't know, but it's fascinating. Now again, walking around the walking around the crumb. Look at this. This is around the back of a library. Same area, same complex, just a different part. Look at this. Now this is again. Where I just went in and showed you the houses, this is about 30 metres down the road. So I'm following the perimeter of this structure. And this is the stuff I'm coming across. This seems to be in very good condition, this part. And again, look at that mixture. Look at that. Phenomenal. 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 All systems go. Look, and this has got the stuff spread over it. Which again, another thing that I've noticed, and I, I believe they've done that to make it look like it's natural. Look, look at that. It's just pure red sandstone underneath. And what's been spread on top of it is completely different to what what actually is. And, and it could just be the fact that there might be a chemical missing, but it seems crystal clear that this red sandstone moss don't grow on it. But the, the, the stuff on the exterior that they're spreading over it, the moss is growing on that. And look at it. And it's not that, it's everywhere I go. It's the same old script everywhere I go. The moss seems to adhere to the mixture on the external, but the actual red sandstone seems like nothing wants to adhere to it, which could be a good thing, I suppose. I mean, what building material, like how superior would that be? But then why would you smear something over it? It's just so many questions. So many questions. So I'm just speeding this up now just to get out of here. Here we go. But you can see these cabinets. I'd love to know what's inside here though. And again, look, just around the back of a library. You wouldn't even know that was there, would you? Look at that. Right, so we've walked quite a fair way around this, around this structure, um, but we haven't finished yet. Now I have to take you to the water supply that's been completely shut off. Like you can't even see this part. Like I only come across this by accident. And again, look how much earth has been pushed up it. And when you start looking in these little nooks and crannies, you can see more blocked up entrances. Look at this, wait till you see this. Boom, you've got that old stonework, gray block wall again. But look how much rubble is in there. And I'm just poking the camera in. And, and another thing is I'm six foot up in the air at the minute. I've climbed up the side of all this earth, pushed up against this structure. And again, look at the triangle segments. If this was sedimentary rock, there's the two old people that phoned the police on me. Look, the whole of this has just got earth pushed up it. And look at it, it's just been 3D printed in my opinion. And when I say 3D printed, it's hard for people to comprehend that because these structures in my opinion are thousands of years old and what were people, why are people 
3D printing buildings thousands of years ago. So here we go. So I'll jump into no man's land. This is actually no man's land. I'm in between the pumping station and this geopolymer structure. And you can see that, look at the effort. All this just been pushed up it. So they've let the trees come down it. And, and a bit of render down here. Look at that, a little bit of render sitting on the wall. And it's bricked up as well. So there was multiple entrances along this part. So on the left hand side is the pumping station. On the right hand side is the geopolymer structure. Just the other part we've been examining. So when I come down the road Holloway at the start of this video, I turned right. Now I've turned left. This is the actual segment that was con I actually concealed it beneath the yellow square. Right, let me just show you it's this one. So here she is, and this is it from the boots on the ground view. So you can see that this whole place has been completely buried. It's, it's got the earth slapped on it. It's got fence round it. Look at this. Like really gone out their way, and I'm actually in no man's land at the minute because this is like a cavity at the minute. <laughs> like, you, like, so you can't actually access this part that I'm in. But like I've shown you, there was three entrances that have been blocked up just in this one little segment. A barbed wire, the shebang, the whole shebang. Now, in my opinion, look at the sandstone. If you was to go along around the back of that, it's going to be full of nuggets because that is actually inaccessible to anyone. Now. Let's go to another part because this bit was very interesting. They managed to leave this part here. Now imagine having this incorporated into your house. Look at it. Let's have a little zoom in. Let's have a little zoom right in. You can see the stairs that have been imprinted or cut into that. You've got uh, a, this, a window and a door down here. And behind this brick wall, I bet my bottom dollar there's going to be entrances into this complex. Now again, I've got stress. I am painting this picture like Picasso because I'm just walking around a one half a mile square metre, mile, sorry, half a square mile, and I'm showing you this complex from all different angles. Again, just directly built on top. There's no foundations to these, these, these modern buildings. They're built directly on top of the sandstone. Look at that. Now, I'm not making it up. Now, like I say, when they're building houses directly on top of this stuff, have a look at this. Have a look at this. This is so weak, but they're building houses on it. Look at this. And it goes underneath. There's multiple entrances in here. Anyway, let's have a look at the surrounding areas because the, the behind all this, by the way, behind all this bush is pure sandstone. None of it's been carved. There's no tool marks. Have a look. All I see is 3D printed and I see forming marks. That's all I see. I see geopolymer cast directly on top of each other with print marks that's all i see i don't see no tool marks or nothing at all again look look at this up here they've clearly cast some concrete but behind that again i bet my bottom dollar that's why there's weak vents all over that and again left right right in front it's all sandstone just being completely covered up now why would you do that why would you cover it all up like that? Look at this. This is, when I say a complex, this is what I mean. These places were like living cities, living towns. All built for you. Anyway, I hope I've painted an incredible picture for you because I love it when I make videos like this. I love acting like Picasso and I love painting pictures and connecting dots for people. It's like, it really does get the uh, the dopamine going in my, in my brain, you know? So, with that being said, please make sure to subscribe to this channel because I don't want to blow me on trumpet, but we're actually doing things that no one's doing. I know there's a group of people that are following suit of me. I understand that, but I feel like I'm the leader of the of this this movement, of this geopolymer and this old world berry structure business. So honestly, give us a like and a subscribe and a comment and a share and all that jazz because it helps out massively, 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 massively. And I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep exposing these geopolymer structures that are everywhere. To normal people, they're just cliffs. But to me and people that watch this channel, you know that these are old world living. And let me, let me just give you an example. This place here, uh, we're told this is a hill with 
cliffs, uh, caves built into it. But have a look. When I show you on top of this, it's just a square. It's just a square structure. Now I'm sitting on top of it, and I'm walking from one side to the other. And I'm showing you, it's just a square. That's all it is. Look, boom. So we're taught that this is uh, a bit of sedimentary rock, even though we're incredibly high above sea level. And then when you look inside these places, at the very top of them, they're all swirled, like it's been squirted out of a machine, like an ice cream machine, in layers. Look at it. Always swirls to the corner. But I digress. These are clearly old world living. And uh, like... Uh, it's quite offensive, really, that people would want to accept this as natural and that the people have cut stuff out of this. This is all rock cut. I mean, give me a break. Give me a real break. Look at these are proper, proper houses. Proper houses that are never go anywhere. Never going to go anywhere. They've been there donkey's years. And they're always going to be there. Anyway. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and all that jazz. I know I've said it, and I'm going to keep saying it. You need to get me to 100k so we can explore this realm with this blueprint and work out what the heck's been going on. One love, guys. And please, please like and share. One love. ta -das. ta -das. That's very peculiar, mate. I can only assume this is for water. Easy Tigers, I hope everyone's fine and dandy. Welcome back as always, I just need to big up the Patreons and the guys on PayPal. It's thanks to you guys, we are out uncovering this history and blowing smoke up these controllers' backsides. Core, cool, they do not like it because how do I know? Because I'm getting stick left, right and centre. So if you want to join the gang, links are in the description. Let's go. So, I was at Samson last week exploring this old world house and we come across this which was about 100 metres up the road. And I wanted to know why go on inside of here? What is going on here? Why was there locks on the doors? And in fact, we found two of them. So this is what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you the footage that we got there. I'm going to show you what they, the footage is and what I think it is as well. And it's not a well, no pun intended. Well, it could be a well, 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 well. So anyway, this is Google Earth. And this is where we park, and this is the lane or the, the road that I'd walk up. I'll show you in the LiDAR in a minute, Wagwan. But this particular part here is where the rock house was that had the chimney, the cooker, uh, the fireplace, and all that. Lot. And just up here, which I think is this depression here where it's dark, is where we found this entrance. And it was just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal the first time we went there there was a lock on the door the second time we went there the lock was gone so thank thank whoever did that for us thank you very much i appreciate that but also notice that there's four of these depressions one two three four going behind each other and also just above that that was on a little miniature hill but the whole thing's been smoothed out if you can see but i'll show you on the lidar anyway that gives you a much better image here we go so, again, this is where I parked, there, where I just tapped. And then you walk up this lane, and then you've got the rock house here, right there that I just tapped again. And then just a bit further up, you've got these depressions. Now this is what you look for when you're doing research on LiDAR, and this is how you find tunnels and things like that. So anyone doing this research, make note of that absolute note of that thing there because that is what gets you these nuggets and again here so this is another what we call ridge but they're not these are like in my eyes these are ancient structures buried because why are they just putting tree over the sandstone and nothing else as soon as the sandstone runs out it goes back to grass this is all sandstone as we like to call it ridges in inverted commas but look at the terrain Look at it. Look how it's changed and manipulated. So what was going on here? What was going on here? 
This is a very peculiar part, and I will, I will, I will let you know this now. At the end of the month, me and my mate are going to be staying in that cave there. Uh, we're going to clean out the cooker, clean out the chimney, and get a fire on the go in there. And we're going to order a pizza and get it delivered to the cave house. Anyway, this was 100 metres up the road. Uphill as well. So anyway, we're inside now. Look at this. And again, I just want to point out the striation marks. This point here, right here, by the way, um, in according to the narrative, is the edge of the seabed. So how's your luck that we, we are standing at the edge of the seabed? <laughs> anyway, this is what's going on inside. Look at this. And then look at all the brickwork here. Now, what's behind all this brick? What is going on in this place? Why is there a humongous shaft that's about 30 foot wide and about 50 foot deep filled with rubble and rubbish? And who bricks all this up? And then who put the locks on? What is going on here? There's so many questions, it's unbelievable. Now, this was it, clearly a gate went here and this is geopolymer, you can see the imprint and uh, no, I just want to stress, we are about 100 metres above sea level and not one sniff of marine biology in this sedimentary rock. And bearing in mind, like I keep saying, these bits where these joints meet, these striations, this is meant to be where seabeds were compressed underground. <laughs> Don't worry about it, that's a load of cobblers I know. But so I've just showed you one side and now I'm showing you the other side. So it looked like a gate or something went there. But here's the striation marks up close and joint marks. So all of these lines represent individual beds over millions and millions and millions of years. Look at that. And then something happened. Something tipped the well 45 degrees. And then the seabed started to lay again on, on top of a 45 degree angle. <laughs> and then you've got an impression here, which is very good. It's like a door or something went there. Have a look at this. You're telling me this is natural? I don't think so somehow. I don't think so. Like, what's the chances of seeing the edge of a seabed that's been compressed a million, a million times over 250 million years? What's the chances of seeing that particular point right here? This point here is 200 million years worth of seabeds compressed. Oh, they've also got another excuse for it as well. It could also be aqueous sand dunes, underwater sand dunes. This is what's another reason that causes it. So it's the cementation process that we are left with, which, which is uh, according to the narrative. It's the marine biology that's made all of this sand, this loose sand, stick together. Nature's amazing. Nature's absolutely amazing. Don't forget last week... We, I showed you nature was knocking out blocks from underground. Perfect blocks. But we're not here to talk about that. So what's happened to the striation marks on this point then? Where's all these straight lines gone here? I digress. But seriously, what is behind this brick wall? I want to know. And what was this shaft for? Because this is the door in the background and you would never have known it was there. And what's above this shaft or this entrance is nothing. Just leaves, bush, grass, mud, earth. So, what do I think these are? I think they're something called... So, I believe they're what are called canets. That's what I believe they are. And I've been in a few of these in Malta, and they're called anets in Malta, because you don't pronounce the Q. Well, you do pronounce the Q. It's done from the chest, so it's anets. I can't even do it. I ain't got the Arabic tongue. But this is what I believe we're in. 100%. And these are all over the world, especially in the Middle East and the Old World. Exactly the Old World. So let's have a little read up uh, what it says about them. A cannon is a structure intended for the capture of an underground water table and the abduction of water to the outside, which consists of a set vertical wells, access and ventilation, connected to a drainage gallery, slightly sloping which conveys water to systems or an exurgence. For the populations of arid or semi-arid regions, the anit or gannet or canit constitutes a consistent or constant and regular source of water. Whatever the season, it allows, for example, the irrigation of agricultural crops. 
Now, I'm not saying this is exactly what it is, but what I am doing is putting two and two together. Now, we're on what is like a hill. These are vertical shafts, quite large, and they're in the middle of some sort of habitation because there's cave houses around. So this tells you this is an area of old world living, and this must be something to do with the water supply. So the Canic technique was most likely developed in Persia around the beginning of the millennia BC and then it would have spread slowly east and west. There are thus many Canics in North Africa, Morocco, Algeria, Libya, in the Middle East, Iran and further east in Central Asia from Afghanistan and India to China. Now isn't that interesting that that's mentioned in all the places that I want to go to? because this is the, the stuff that you find in the limestone and the sandstone structures. Now we're told it's geology, but I'm telling you, you don't have to leave, believe me, you do what you want, but in my opinion, and after exploring these places and smelling it and touching it and sniffing it and all that jazz, these are geopolymer old world structures, buried. Anyway, where was I? Historically, the majority of the populations of Iran and other arid regions of Asia or North Africa were dependent on water provided by Canets. Settlement spaces thus correspondent to places where the construction of canics were possible. And again, here, where are we? You can see when I show you the picture of this area on the LiDAR, you can see that this place is sucking up water from somewhere or there's water underneath it because there's, there's a few local reservoirs, above ground channels and dried up reservoirs. There's so much sign of water being distributed around this area. Henri Goblot, which is an historian, describes the canet as a technique of a mining character which consists in exploiting underground water tables by means of draining galleries. It is used by French speaking scientists to designate this type of work in general, without reference to a particular ge geographical region. The canets are perhaps the most important technical advancement in the history of the irrigation in Iran. First of them would have been dug in the northwest of the Iranian plateau towards the end of the first millennia. Now, do you not find it very strange that uh, you only find this in the limestone or sandstone structures? Now, I find that very fascinating, and it's funny that these same structures that are called natural, I'm calling geopolymers. And it's funny that all this stuff is buried, and it's always high up. Like the sea level is high up from sea level, all of it, always. So there's a lot of key points to take in here. Now let's have a look at this, this place in Iran. Let's have a look at one of these canics in Iran because it'll give you an idea of what these places look like. So they're all like an enclosed area and you have steps going into it or down to it. And you'll have a shaft, possibly filled with water, but that shaft will go straight down and connect to the water table. So that distributes water over a long period of time or a long distance and there'll be different points for access and ventilation and maintenance. Now I believe a lot of these have been buried where we are looking but there is one or two that have been exposed shall we say and here you can see the water running underneath so you're looking down one of the, the holes in the canet. So that's what I believe we're working with and again this is in Iran look at it it's like, like we just went in now. Uh, you, like you're on, you're, you're on a slight hill or a plateau or a ridge or whatever you want to call it and then you have an entrance going in and that takes you to the shaft. Now I want to know what was behind all that brickwork because I think that you'll find something like this down there. This is in Iran. Don't forget I found all this in England on the west side which is phenomenal and again and I'll keep saying it, but I've come across this in Malta, and I know exactly where all these sort of places are in Malta. I know where all the water galleries are in Malta. I have a map for it, so I'm going to show you, and I'm going to knock your socks off, and you are not going to believe it. And why do you think there's wars in these places? Why do they think you don't want they don't want you to go here? Because look at the history; it's rich in history, and the history don't match the history books. So they put fear into you, and they tell you, "Don't go to these places. Don't go to Egypt. There's a terrorist attack." Don't go to Afghan, don't go to here, don't go to there. But it's not going to put me off. Now, what strengthens my idea that this could be something to do with water and maybe the canets is because I find a lot of irrigation around these dwellings put into the sandstone, like, like miniature aqueducts. Look at this. 
And the, 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 these images around are in Iran. And the one I'm zooming in now on the bottom right is an aqueduct that I found outside this inverted commas can it and outside the rock house that we last examined so what is going on here why are we getting the same characteristics as the middle east in the middle of england now let's have a look at that whole area and again like i say they plant bush and put mud and grass and trees all over the sandstone as soon as the sandstone runs out it goes back to flat grass so it's very strange that they do that. And I just want to point out that in this same area is a golf course and multiple quarries. Now, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but flipping hell, mate. Am I bang on or what? So this is why. This is why I, I had to get rid of my email address because I was getting so much hate mail. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm losing subscribers on a, a big scale daily. Like I upload my videos onto YouTube and the format gets changed around. Like people are unsubscribing. My comments don't get shown. Like, and this is all because, I don't know why, I don't understand it. Because if I was in control, I'd just shut the flipping channel down. I wouldn't do all this crap, I'd just shut it down straight away. But all I can do is plod along and keep on doing what I'm doing. That's all I can do. I'm not getting involved in no one else. I'm not going to talk about no one else. I learnt my lesson with the old John Levy. Even though I just voiced my opinion, I got sh I got I got stick for it, and it taught me a lesson. It taught me to keep my mouth shut unless I've got something good to say. Like I'm 37. I learnt that a long time ago. But sometimes, sometimes uh, you like to, I don't know go out of the box a bit, you know? And that's what happened. But I've got to talk my lesson. And I just think it's weird that you see now, there's so much people in the community, like, putting each other down and discrediting each other's information. Like, I'm staying out of all of it, I'm not interested. Definitely not interested. So anyway, I found another one of these canets and this one was in a place called Himley Hall. So, let's have a look at this place then. Again, we went there. There was no locks on the door, which was amazing. Someone had come there before and took them all off. Love it. But what you're left with, oh, and I want to point out with this one, there was no striation marks on the here or no joint marks on this one at all, by the way. Nothing. Look at the walls. But what you do have is you have the imprint of the old school framing that you'd see. So you need like the old door frames. So you know a wooden door frame would have gone there. And that is that is the shaft in there. That go, that's another shaft. This is shaft number two. This is shaft number two. Look at that. Like I said, this is only something you find in the Middle East or Egypt or Afghan or, or Libya or somewhere like that. If you follow the narrative, if you follow me, you're going to find all this stuff everywhere. Like this is in England. This is this is in Bur This is near Birmingham. Birmingham, where you be forty are from, you know. So, what do you think? That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know on Telegram. Please let me know on Telegram. I'll leave the links for my Telegram group underneath. But it's very peculiar. And also, there was a couple of bats in here that didn't even want to move. But I digress, guys. I digress. So, this was inside that shaft. And I'm, I'm looking down now. And it was about a 40 foot drop, this one. But we don't know how much rubble's in there. Or rubbish and all that stuff. And it looks like, to me, Victorian rubble. Or rubbish. There's no plastic in there. Or crisp packets or anything. It's all just metal. It looks like metal and blocks. So, I don't know what's going on here. And also, this one doesn't have brickwork on the left hand side of it. Which is very peculiar. But I just want to point out, this whole ridge or this structure was from, from where we parked, which was the start of it, to the other side, which is 0.39 miles, which is just under half a mile long. So that's quite a big old structure. And I'd like to point out that there's water on one side of it and on the other side of it. So I'm guessing the water went underneath it as well. And these shafts are above it. So it's collecting the water from underneath. That's what I believe is going on. I don't believe that the great, is it the great pool? I don't believe that used to be there. 
I reckon the water was on the ground and they were sucking it up. But something's happened here. I don't know what's happened. That's what we're working out. And also, in another video, you've got this little lake bit here. We found some very interesting rock stuff here. Some geopolymer stuff. And I'm going to show you that in the next video. And it's right next to the water. So, like I'm exposing this geology business is a load of cobblers. For you to come out of university with the degree, the bent degree that it is, you have to be a yes man. You have to sit there and go against what you believe and accept what someone says and regurgitate their BS for you to come out of there successful. And that's not a bit of me. That is not a bit of me. Because when you come across stuff like this, you can't explain it. And then cognitive dissonance turns kicks in and then your then your, your brain's frying and then you're arguing with people and all because you've been fed a load of 